The ongoing story of 5G poles in Dewey Beach continues as the town and residents strive to get poles off the ocean dune entrances. But the question still remains, where will the poles be relocated? Coastal Stewards has offered the town guidance as it works to develop a wireless ordinance and design standards to help protect the town's seascape, environment, and history. Commissioner, meeting. Thanks for the opportunity to speak. Town managers, town commissioners, and CTCL, your work on this. I am a Dewey Beach property owner since 2017, coming to Dewey Beach for about 20 years. I'm a member of Coastal Stewards, which is a group of concerned citizens dedicated to preserving the seascape and natural beauty of small coastal towns. I will comment, and at some point you want to cut me off, let me know. So I will just jump right in. First comment, looking at the National Environmental Policy Act, I see that that was included or is included in the checklist. Thank you for that. Second, historic review. Um, I again don't see any mention of a historic review in the design standards. Uh, this would be in line with the National Historic Preservation Act, NHPA. We know the life-saving station where you are is the most historical place in Dewey Beach. And again, we should be preserving and protecting that history. The station was commissioned in 1878. Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act states policy need to consider the effect on historic properties. There is language that if there is a historic property that is at least 50 years old or the site, it needs to be considered when looking at wireless types of equipment. I really stress or encourage us to really be sure that we're preserving Dewey Beach history. Third, the 50 feet pole allowance in the planning and zoning meeting, there was talk of trying to get these poles on the median and that being the focus of where we want the poles. I know Commissioner Bauer, Commissioner Cook had spoken about that. I know our 35 foot limit is in the town, but we're allowing 50 feet. I'd like to see the clarification that the 50 feet should be designated, you know, not on the side streets, but really in the median. If that's where the 50 foot is going to be allowed to reach over. I don't think we want to see 50 foot on side streets or closer to residences. Radio frequency emissions uh, in the planning and zoning meeting, we talked about third party, someone from a third party coming in to verify these emissions and it having it being at a recertification or an annual level. We um, stress that that is very important. Verizon can state and give us reports from their engineer, but really third party verification is critical, especially we don't know about what these emissions might or might not do. And over the next couple of years, if they do install a poll, how do we know that the emissions were the same as their applicant period of when they applied? So a third party verification, not at just application, but years after could be critical. Same thing with stealth technology that is listed as a definition in the ordinance. We list it as a definition, but nowhere else in the design standards or the ordinance do we ask that, yes, with all possible efforts that they use equipment that is concealed, that is camouflaged, that is stealth technology to really preserve our little beach town so we don't have these poles sticking out where they can and cost effectively conceal, camouflage, disguise these antennas. You know, so let's be clearer in our language. We just defined it. We don't talk about more what we mean. Um, American Disabilities Act. We talk about ADA compliance on the sidewalks. Thank you for adding that. But what about crosswalks? If we put a poll in the median, we need to be clear that in any public walkways or public areas, the American Dis with Disabilities Act should apply residential locations or damage injury language. So in the model ordinance, JC Smith had talked about or submitted to the town, we had talked about avoiding placement or small cell proximity to residents or sleeping quarters, living quarters to the best of our ability. And then if that is within 500 feet of a resident to notify that residents of that installation or proposed installation, just so that they're aware that, you know, something doesn't pop up by their house. So again, these are um, comments from a model ordinance that 
we had provided to the town and have adequate fall to minimize any possibility of damage or injury by pole collapse or failure, ice fall, debris fall, having language that gives this adequate fall zone. So if something was to fall off that pole, ice, any equipment, it's not going to injure anyone on the streets or in our town. I will keep going if that's okay. Uh, it's my yeah. understanding that you have just uh, recently submitted the a summary of this to our town manager. I can submit a full, a more compiled list. If, if you wouldn't mind, that would be wonderful. Sure. I will do that. And thank you so much. I think we have a lot of outstanding issues to address in the ordinance and design standard, make this the best ordinance and design standard for our little town. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so thank much, you so much okay. for calling in and to, you know, caring and, and expressing your point of view. One thing I think is common in the town of Dewey Beach is that where there's a consistent viewpoint of these poles 